All right, good morning, guys. We meet at the storage unit. It's a complete disaster. But we are coming here to get the double stroller, which we rarely ever use, obviously, because it's in storage, because we are taking the kids to the Renaissance Festival today. Back in Charlotte, we used to go to the Renaissance Festival every year, and, well, we will need probably a single. Okay. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, just in case. Anyways, we used to go every year last year because of the Rona, they didn't have it. And so this year we decided to make a day trip out of it and drive back to Charlotte. So we've been getting everybody ready. Going in. Jesus. Ow! Do you even know where it is? I see it right now. Oh my gosh. Y'all, we have got to come here and go to this. There's my Christmas decorations that we need to get. Do you see it? Yeah, I see it. Are you going to be able to lift it? Who can talk to here? Oh my gosh, okay. I'm like a Greek god. Come on. All Should we just right. Bring these guys and carry the twins in the backpacks? No. These are quality. I really like them. Benjamin! Oh, no. La cucaracha on the floor. What? I really hope you're not breaking stuff. What? 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 Uh, we got one minute stop to get gas. We'll put air in the tires. Oh, are the tires flat? Uh -huh. Are they. Mm -hmm. That sounds like Christmas decorations. Broken balls. We have Christmas decorations. Are they flat because there are holes in them? No, or? flat because they, it hasn't been used. Okay, all. all right. I just want to make sure that it's not, you know. That's going to be a problem. They're flat, flat. I will need you to grab this after I lift it over. Oh, jeez. Okay, quick. hold on. Okay. What? Pretty sure that's how it used to yeah, do it. Yeah, that's fine. Here's me on the glass. Yep. Hi, yo. Yay. All right, I know, baby, we're coming. I know. We're making a quick pit stop for the bathroom. Yo, leave your shoes on, baby. We're gonna go inside and, and go some potty. lunch and get some food. You ready? Hey, yo. You gotta go use the potty. How is many up? All gonna have to go inside to get food and go to the bathroom. We are here. We are unloading. Here, put him. Thank you. What's that? Gum. Oh. Yeah, let's leave that in the car, okay? Hey, Mom, can I come out now? Yes, come stand over here. Get yes. your coat. I got my coat. Anything you might need. The only thing I need is a lolly. A lolly? Hey, this year, you guys, you can just skip the petting zoo and the mother goose since we've got all that at home. Right? Yeah. Bye. Right. No need to see a goose. No need to see goats. Yep. No, see no or what are you doing, us. son? Why? I don't have to see. Stand. Yeah, you ready? You ready? 4.15 and 2.30. You reading your paper? Um, no. Nah. You bothering you? You reading your paper? Yeah, not funny. You read in your paper? The next oh. jousting match is at 2.30. It's 2.05 right now. Okay. We <laughs> Millie! We're jogging! Hey. <laughs> this race is, it's always a tie. <laughs> It's 
meant to be. You see the horses? Can you see? I just wanted to pop on because the vlog was a little bit, um, it was a little bit all over the place and I apologize if it was shaky and such. I did not bring the normal camera that we vlog with uh, because it's so big. So I wanted to bring the smaller one and it just is a little bit um, shakier, I'd say. So sorry if any of that footage made y'all nauseous. I wanted to close out the vlog because I got so angry yesterday. I got so angry yesterday and it's been a long time since I have been that angry. I almost, you know, came like turned on the vlog and was going to, you know, rant about what was making me angry yesterday and I decided that no, I would not. I mean, I think we all know that, um, you know, saying things when you're angry is not a good idea that you should simmer down and calm down a little bit. It actually reminded me of something that I recently, well, within the last year, learned about Lincoln and that he used to, when he would get really angry with someone, whether it was someone, you know, on his side, if you will, or not, he would do this thing where he would write what he called a hot letter. So he would sit down and write out everything that he was thinking and feeling like that he was going to, you know, that he wanted to say to this person. And then um, instead of mailing it, he would burn it, toss it in the trash, throw it away, be done with it. But that it really helped him to just kind of like get the emotions out. And, you know, the idea was that I'll write it, but I'm not going to send it yet. I'm going to wait and think on it. And he found that typically after writing the letter, getting it out, and then going back and rereading it, he realized that, you know, this really wasn't valuable to send to this person that he was so angry at or whatever that, you know, he was just going to destroy it and be done with it. Just kind of a way to like get those emotions out. And I've thought a lot about that over the last year, just in various things, obviously not necessarily related to like specific people, but situations and things that I can feel really tempted to hop online or turn on the camera and just like blast about. But I've thought a lot about that, about Lincoln's hot letters. And I think actually even uh, President Obama said that did the same thing, that he used to write hot letters. My point being that I think this is number one, a good strategy for all of us, you know, not just me, but everyone um, to sort of, you know, go farther than taking the idea of just saying like, I'm going to cool down for a minute before I say anything or do anything. I think so many things, <laughs> the world would be better if um, we weren't just so reactionary. However, upon sleeping overnight and thinking about it and, you know, not immediately jumping to turn on the vlog and complain, I now feel more simmered down and cooler about the whole situation to not just rant, but my feelings on it haven't changed. So here's what happened, and um, I'll try to make this very, very quick. Long story short, you know, we went to the Renaissance Festival yesterday, and look, I get it. People have been cooped up for the last year and a half, but this Renaissance Festival is crowded every single year. It's just the way that it is. Uh, they run it for like two months, Saturdays and Sundays for two months, and every time we've gone, it's been crowded. And you know, I am just, you know, I understand that we're a big family and that does pose some, you know, difficult circumstances at times, especially at crowded places and things. I can't tell you how many times people gave me a dirty look, purposely cut us, cut me off pushing the stroller, and then even went as far as to say things to us or in passing um, about our kids and about you know, just the kids essentially like being there, being in the way. Um, it was very, 
you can probably see from some of the footage certain you know places there's sort of like two main aisles you walk down and one of them in particular was very 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 crowded um, and it was very like shoulder to shoulder and the annoyance that people had at the presence of children there made me so angry at the end of the day well twofold number one we paid to be there just like anybody else Every single person had to buy. We paid an exorbitant, expensive, stupidly overpriced ticket price, just like everybody else. It's not like everyone else paid to be there and we were there for free or our kids were there for free. We had to pay for children too. So we paid to be there just like they did. And then secondary to that, I think it just speaks to a larger message that I feel is just constantly out there, which is that children are an inconvenience to others and that you are somehow owed a childless world. It's absolutely insane and it infuriates me when people act like, look, I get it. There's, you know, children should be seen and not heard. There's that whole generation. Um, and I, I understand not wanting your child to go into a public space and be obnoxious and, you know, ruin other people's meals at restaurants and things like that. But there's a massive difference between having an obnoxious child um, that is just running amok and which for by the way you don't even have any clue of what the reason is that that child may be behaving that way anyways i don't want to get into the the weeds here my point is is that no one is owed a childless world you were once a child uh, everyone was once a child you're not owed a childless world and if children being present somewhere is inconvenient to you like you need to reassess your headspace, okay? And it's just, it made me so angry seeing these visibly drunk adults stumbling around, you know, and I get it, it's fun to wear the costumes and stuff. We always say every year we're going to, but you know, you got these women in their wench costumes with their corsets on and everything's falling out the top and their beer sloshing and they're drunk and they're using vulgar language towards my children as they pass us by, just about our presence. Um, and I, had to refrain i had to restrain myself because i was like what do i want my children to witness of this from me what do i want because i was ready to go fisticuffs with some people i was so angry and annoyed and i feel myself getting angry again so i'm gonna try to just simmer it down but i just feel as though this is just wrong it's just flat out wrong it's wrong to treat families this way it's wrong to treat children this way um, and I think that, again, it just speaks to a larger thought that our society seems to have about the value and worth of children um, and where they belong. And I'm sure there's people who will disagree with me. There always are. I could say the sky is blue and somebody will be like, it's not blue, it's aqua. And I get it, okay? You're free to disagree. I don't even care. You're free to disagree. I have been watching this for 14 years, I've experienced it as having a family that sticks out. Larger family, a multicultural family, our family sticks out and uh, can tend to draw both good and bad in a little bit more, I would say, than the average two parents, two child family. The whole thing was very crowded and stuff, so it made it very hard to vlog. Probably shouldn't have <laughs> attempted, but we, you know, we love having the memories of videos when we go and do these things. Um, so, we thought we would attempt to vlog, probably not the best idea because it was just so crowded and loud. Um, so I apologize that this vlog was a little chaotic and all over the place and now I'm ending it with like a little bit of a rant. Though I don't, I don't mean to rant. I just, what I would have said yesterday would have been far more aggressive. Slept on it overnight, still upset about it, which means to me that it's worthy of saying out loud and sharing because typically if I'm really upset about it, I sleep on it. The next day, if I'm just like, oh, it doesn't matter, whatever, um, then I can let it go. And that's, you know, sort of Lincoln's hot letter idea. Like, I can just let it go. But this was something that I slept on, got up, still angry about it. I guess this is just my reminder to you if you are a mom, if you're a young mom with little kids and, you know, you feel the weight of going places and feeling like your family is an inconvenience, your children are an inconvenience, don't let that don't let that seep into your heart. Don't let it seep in mentally. Um, your children have just as much place in this world as anybody else. People aren't owed a childless world. Don't feel guilty for living and existing and having your children live life right alongside you. That's my thoughts. I'm gonna go. We'll see you guys again for another video very soon.